beginning of the year for most of us and um, for all of us and to many of us the beginning of this year as it is is the beginning of new aspirations new aspiration new hope for some is a renewed expectation the expectations that were not met in the year past is being renewed in us afresh, and hope is gaining ground. I hope I'm talking to somebody this morning. But for some other person, maybe the irrevocable covenant of God is being reestablished in us so that we are made to be affirmed that God's covenant is binding us together with him. In all of these desires that we have mentioned, and I pray that is for you or for one other person or maybe for a loved one around you. What we are trying to see this morning is that if we established our heart and hear God, we will find out that all these desires are quite easy to be fulfilled either by the will of God or through the word of God. The will of God has already fulfilled everything that the word of God pronounced upon our lives. And that's why this morning, by the unction of the reading of the word that we have heard this day, I command that the power of God for this word to be fulfilled and to be performed in our lives, be released in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says in Luke 1 45, it says, For to them who believed, say there will be a performance. And I say this morning that there will be a performance of the word of God Amen. over your life, Amen. over my life, Amen. over things that concern you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The will of God, the will of the Father, will come to pass in your life this year. According to how the word of God is being decreed over our lives today. You're not listening to man, but God is the one who is decreeing over your life. That it shall be done just as the word of God is has declared it in the name of Jesus Christ. How many people have debts to be canceled this year? Debt. Okay. You're in a good place. As I mentioned, debt cancellation, a lot of us, if you're like me, we, we our mind easily go around checking the different people that we owe. Some of us owe the government. Some of us owe the banks. Some of us owe inland revenue. Some of us owe people. I hope there's other person sitting beside you. <laughs> uh, praise God. <laughs> Government agencies, husbands owing their wives, wives owing their husbands, and different kind of debts like that. But it doesn't matter if you are focused first on financial debt cancellation, you are still in the right place. And I believe very strongly, according to what we started with this morning, that debt cancellation, financial debt cancellation, 
And the joy of it will be released over your life this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The best way to address financial debt cancellation as a Christian is to enter a financial partnership with God. I'll be lying to you if I say to you that debt will be cancelled financially if I don't tell you how it could be cancelled. Because don't forget, we said, upon the word of God, if God has said it, if it's in the will of God, and God has said it in his word, then he's bound to fulfill it. Very quickly, if you want to enjoy financial debt cancellation in God, the steps are very, very easy. I'll just mention to us seven steps. I won't, this is not my message, but you can take this for free. Number one, for financial debt cancellation, you have to first believe that everything you own belongs to God. Every single thing you own, I didn't say that you owe, I said that you own, belongs to God. Your life, your time, your resources, everything that you can ever think about belongs to God. Number two. Honor God regularly with your tithe, with his tithe. I beg to correct. Honor God regularly with his tithe. Because those tithe belong to him first. Number three, generously give your free will offering to him and to the work of God. I'm sharing with us seven ways that can bring financial partnership with God and will lead to the breakthrough of death cancellation, financial debt cancellation. Number four, seize opportunities to sow good seed in fertile grounds or in area of your need. Seize opportunities to sow good seeds. If you are desiring something somewhere in your life, if you find someone or something going on in someone's life, if they are good seeds, sow into that place. And I do this a lot. There are people I have identified that their lives are like Fertile grounds. You sow things into their lives, it comes back so quickly. And I hope your life could be a fertile ground. Amen? Yeah. Number five. After you have done all those things so clearly, then desire to pay your debts. Don't pray that the creditor will forget. It's a wrong prayer. Somebody say wrong prayer. Don't pray that the creditor will die and then you will not have to pay. Wrong prayer. Don't pray those prayers. Those are witchcraft prayers. God don't answer them. After you have lined up with God, desire in your heart that you want to pay those debts. That you are owing the government, you are owing somebody, you are owing whosoever it is. Just have it in your mind that I want to pay this debt. And number six, pray that God should make you a way to pay the debt off. That's when prayer now comes in. Once you fulfill these six steps, then continue steadfastly 
in this direction, then see God work for you in an incredible way. I'm sharing with you things that have happened for me. Let me quickly chip this in. There was a time many years ago, many years ago, I had a project that I was going to do, and then I, need, I had some money, and I needed some more money to add to it to do. And I came across someone who could help me, and I asked, and they, they actually borrowed me some money. I had known them from childhood. So we borrow, I borrowed the money. And interesting, they started coming to church. Once they heard. Not our church, our parent church from where we came. And then started coming to church. You know, it got to a time and I couldn't, I mean, the time I was going to pay the money has, has passed. I haven't paid. And I, it started worrying me that I need to sort this out. And I started praying. I started asking that God, you will sort this out. It became a time that the enemy almost caged me with that debt. Now, when I see them, my heart skips. Don't forget this time, I'm their pastor. One of their pastors. But guess what happened? I started following this way. One day, God positioned me to have what my creditor need in my hand. What they really need. That money cannot buy. Just to put it in my hands. And I just gave it stresslessly. Stresslessly. I just offered it. I mean, freely you receive, freely you give. But to my shock, as I did this stuff for these guys, you know, he came to me, drove down to my house, I said, he, he felt God said to him that I should not even try to return that money again. I should never even try to return that. You know. In fact, that day he even gave me another love offering. That was how grateful he was that day. What am I saying to you? You cannot tell how God wants to clear those debts. You can't tell. Don't don't try to second guess God. T. Aaron came during the gold, going for gold. And he told us that, was it New Year? Yes, Super, yeah, Super Sunday. Yeah, thank you. And said to us that God canceled his death with inland revenue of how many thousands? 60,000. 60, the same anointing that... Aaron T. Aaron operates upon. This morning is released over your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God still cancels debt. So don't allow your heart to skip no more. If you know that it is in your heart to do, line up with God and let God take care of it. He will fix it, regardless of who. It might not be written off. There might be a way that God can even bless you so much that you pay it off without even blinking. You pay it off and shut your creators who have thought, how will he ever pay it? How will she get money to pay it? You shut them with just one check. And you'll be wondering, how did you, don't worry about answering them. 
You don't need to answer them. Your check answers them. Amen? Amen. However it pleases God this year, he will bring you financial debt cancellation in the mighty name of Jesus. Having said that, beyond financial debt cancellation, there are other debts we could be owing. You might owe somebody a present. Thank God Christmas is gone. Ah, everywhere you turn, Christmas, Christmas, and then you haven't given anything. Maybe it's not a present, maybe just a card. I mean, I know people who have never given somebody a card. Never. No thank you card. No sorry card. No best wishes card. No kind of card. Try. You know how you know whether you are doing well with those things? When your birthday comes and you don't get any card. You don't get any, any. You need to consider it. Because check, if you haven't given, don't expect. Don't expect. Somebody might be owing a text. Just sending somebody a text. Owe somebody a call. There's a guy in this church. I said to him that he's owing me three calls. He has not even fulfilled one of them. <laughs> three. Three. In fact, I'm sure he's listening to me now. If he's not here, he's watching me. Three calls he owes me. You might be owing a visit. You might be owing a smile. You might be owing somebody a cuddle. I know ladies would like that. How many wives look at their husbands? Say, can you see now? You might be owing somebody a greeting. Maybe owe somebody a prayer. Just pray for somebody. No matter what you are owing, that is not necessarily financial. Today I'm proclaiming over your life that there is redemption today. Redemption that is able to take us beyond all those burdens that death could bring over our shoulders. And like we read in that Romans 8 from verse 12. Romans 8 from verse 12. Apostle Paul says, So then, my brothers, we are in debt, not to the flesh, to be living in the way of the flesh. For if you go to the way of the flesh, death will come unto you. But if by the Spirit you put death, the works of the body, you will have life. There are a few narratives that I will use to drive home this point this morning. One of the narratives is, what am I holding here? I mean, forget what I, whatever, whatever iPhone is, is, but it's a phone, isn't it? If you find a phone that can operate an alarm, that can operate a calendar, that can play music, but cannot make or receive calls, is not a phone. You agree with me on that? Yes, sir. A phone, the primary motive of a phone is to make and receive calls. If a phone can do other things, every other things, but that one thing it cannot do, receive and make calls. It's not a phone, throw it away. If you ask somebody in some part of the world that has a friendly dog, you know those friendly dogs, just friendly to everybody. 
And then the day arm robbers come, and the dog is still friendly to the arm robbers, didn't chase them away. Ah, that is not a dog. In the part of the world where I came from, those that eat them, that dog will end up in the pot. That is not a dog. It's meat for those that like it. There is always a primary purpose for everything that you come across in life. Ecclesiastes 3, 1. Everything has its original purpose. And that original purpose, you cannot and you must not deviate from it. Regardless if it can do other things. There are obviously secondary purposes that you get with other things as well. For some reason, in this day and age, you find some secondary purposes of some things, they are now becoming more acceptable than their original purpose. I mean, the secondary purpose of things are now overriding the original primary purpose of the things. And you wonder, this thing, this is not what it was manufactured for. It's like seeing you go to a house and you see a very nice mug that you bought in Debenhams. You save to buy it. Lovely mug to drink your copper every morning. Then you go to somebody else's house. The same copper, the same color. You saw them using it for what? As a flower vase. I mean, wouldn't you get upset? What? My precious, wonderful mug. That is how God feels. That's how God feels. The primary essence of man's creation was to live and govern the earth in the true image of God as sons and daughters of God, led by his spirit, not by flesh. That is the original purpose. If you read it in Genesis 1 from 26 to 31, we don't have time to read, but you can go and read the catalog of what God expects man to do. Why God created man the way he created man. I will tell us in, this, in his image, why? Because he wanted man to have dominion and to govern and rule the earth. Everything that God has created, not in his own idea, but to do it as sons and daughters of God, filled by the Spirit of God. Not controlled by the flesh. The flesh has its purpose. Because don't forget, God created this flesh. Forget what all those beauty guys tells you. Forget all those beauty um, manufacturing companies tell you. No matter what any company, any gurus, therapists know about the flesh, God created the flesh. He molded it. He knows what he wanted it to fulfill. What is the primary essence of the flesh? The primary essence was for the bodies, was to be a body suit for the temple of God that is inside of us. It was built the way it is to house the presence of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 tells us that don't you know that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The spirit is supposed to tell the flesh what to do. But rather, what we see now is that it is the flesh that is commanding and telling the spirit what it's supposed to be doing. 
the flesh is ruling. This morning, I've come to remind us that a lot of things are going wrong. They're going wrong because of our debt to God. A lot of things are going chaotic. Things are breaking down so fast. Why? Because we have left undone, unpaid our debt to God. I don't know how many of you read that book. Things fall apart and the center cannot hold anymore. Why? Because the way that we have chosen to live, that seems closer than life because we have chosen to go the way of the flesh. But this year, 2016, we are putting to death the works of the flesh in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to say with me, that life is coming to my life. life that what God expects of us is that life from him will come more into our lives, not death. And I'm saying this week, this month, this year, that life is returning into every area of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What life are you talking about? What life are you craving for in 2016? Is it any different from the life that you had with you last year? After all, your friend tells you that you were enjoying life. You were enjoying life even though you are not having anything to do with the life of God. There's a choice of a difference in the life that we're talking about for 2016. The difference is that last year we were guided by our emotions in the way we do stuff. We were guided by friends in the way we do things. We were guided by our need. An arm robber was caught a few days ago in some part of the world. And I said, why did you go and steal? He said, my pregnant wife had a need. And if I don't steal, she will have died. So I was pressured to go and steal. There were times that your need was so bankrupt to you to do stuff that you don't want to do. If you check very carefully, some of the things that we had done, that you had done, that I have done, was a result of peer pressure. Your mates are doing it. Your mates are doing it. Everybody's doing it. Let me also do it. Popular opinion. If I say anything different, I'll be seen not to be in the gang anymore. Character flaws make us do some stuff. Our pride make us do some stuff. Our anger Make us to get involved in some things. The wound we suffered from the way that we had been treated from the past. Make us to have unforgiving spirit and then make us to behave the way we behaved. The shame of our circumstances. Sometimes we are so ravaged by the pursuit of our dreams that it covers how we want to do things and don't care how we get it done. 
our passion sometimes blocked our sensi sen sensibility. Regardless of all those things that might have made us to behave the way we behaved, acted the way we have, we have acted, it is under a new understanding. It is now under a new refreshing glory of God that we will make a different choice for this year. That for this year, we will live so that God will govern our lives in a way that it will bring a joyful transformation that pleases him in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Galatians 5.17 tells us that the flesh always and constantly war against the spirit. In Galatians 5.1, it tells us that Christ has truly given us freedom from the bondage of, from the bondage of flesh ruling over our lives. Why do we want to go back into such situation for the flesh to continue to rule? And in verse 21 of the same chapter, Galatians 5, it says, All those who subscribe to the work of the flesh will have no part in the kingdom of God. I hope that is not you. Because this year is for those who want to see the glory of God in his kingdom. This year, God wants to ensure that for every single one of us, the power of God is made to come alive in us. Hear the monumental announcement that Paul made to us in Romans 8.14. That passage that we read at the, at the beginning. It said, all those who are guided by the Spirit of God are sons of God. All those who are guided by the Spirit of God. He says they are sons and daughters of God. My question is, will you allow God to guide you this year? Will you allow God to lead you this year? Forget about all those mistakes that we have made in the past. Let those ones go. Forget about the friends. The emotions, the peer pressure, the need, the popular opinion, the pride, the anger. Line up and let us re receive the guide of God. For if there's going to be a debt cancellation, for us to pay that debt, what is the debt? The debt is that we want God's spirit to guide us. We want God's spirit to lead us. We want God's spirit to be the one that is tailored around everything that we do. You cannot afford to go on a limbo anymore. Because that is the secret of our success. That is the secret of our joy. Maybe your heart was lured away and you made terrible mistakes and you are now full of guilt. The love of the heart of the Father is drawing you close back to him this morning. He knows your name. He knows exactly how far you have gone away from him. And he's saying to you, come back to me. Come to me, my son. Come to me, my daughter. Come and regain your position of royalty. We have a royalty position around God, in God. The last verse I'm going to read or refer to this morning is in verse 15. Say, for you did not get the spirit of servant again to put you in fear. But the spirit of sons was given to you by which we say, Abba, Father. When you are in debt, fear grips your heart so quickly, isn't it? Yes. I said to you earlier on that, you know, 
when I was owing that guy, each time I see him, I can't even worship properly in church. I want to worship God. I say, I. And then you saw them. And then he breaks your heart. You are my all sufficient God. And they look at you <laughs> with, su with sufficiency. How sufficient indeed. Pay my money before we know. I serve a miracle God. Give me the, and don't forget you are the pastor. You are the HOD. You are the husband. You need to show and demonstrate it. Any semblance of your creditor makes you want to go to the toilet. What I'm saying this morning is that if you allow the Spirit of God that we have received through the birth that we have been given the privilege of experiencing in Christ Jesus, if God becomes our source, no fear is able to stand us. God's Spirit does not bring fear. God's Spirit inspires. It does not intimidate. God's Spirit, God's Spirit counsels and it guides. It does not confuse anyone. God's Spirit impacts wisdom and peace. It does not bring foolishness to anyone. God's Spirit gives us a good sense of judgment. And all these things we need for year 2016. God doesn't judge. But God can give you a good sense of judgment to know what to do and to do right. I'm not going to be in a hurry to run away from this chapter of the scripture. I've got so much that God has shown to me that I want us to look at so in-depthly to prepare for this journey that we're sailing into. 2016 will be the best of your years Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Not because a prophet declared it unto you. No, but because you have, you have stayed in God's presence to understand how to get hold of the keys that we have lost. They are the keys of the kingdom that we have lost. If we can sit down with God and pursue the receiving of those keys, there's no way that God will not have mercy on us and show us the things that he had promised that he would show us. I'm asking of you and I'm begging of you to let, up, let us make up our minds that we will pay the debt that we owe God so that we can pursue him with a life full of the spirit of God, not a life that is controlled by flesh and all the works that flesh brings. Amen? Amen. Let's bow down our heads and pray. I want you to Speak to God. We are at a time when we are waiting on God. We're fasting and we are asking God to make this year, their primary reason for fasting is that this year will become a year of great, great glory to him. A year of the revealing of the glory of God upon his church and upon each and every one of us. Whereby he said he will bring divine, the, 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 the divine accomplishment, divine intervention, and divine expansion in our lives. And for all these things to happen, what we are saying is that we want to underscore ourselves to adjust where necessary. And say, God, I want to be part of the beneficiaries of this. So speak to God and say, God, let my life count. In your hands. No matter how far I've been with you. How far away from you I have been. Oh God. Draw me close to you. Let my heart. Be rejoined. Be reconnected to you. 
Father God, we thank you and we bless you. We give you praise. Also, make sure you add us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit the church website.